I've come a long way with my relationship with April. When I was first watching the show, I loathed her. I thought she was this manipulative, attention-seeking, cock-teasing, she-demon that I put her on my top five dumbasses in distress list as number two right next to Karai. But after doing my April series, I realized she wasn't really manipulative. She's just a victim of poor, inconsistent writing. April is just an average girl thrown into a world of madness, but she can still be caring and there for her friends. Yes, she has her damsel moments, especially in the beginning of the show, but she was in training. If she came in as a badass with no ninja training, she'd be considered a Mary Sue. Yes, she does do a lot of stupid things in the love triangle, but I came to realize it's not because she's an attention seeker. It's because we never got to see her point of view in the matter, and according to some comments I see floating around, apparently there was some different ideas in the staff on who April should end up with. Which makes a whole lot of sense. In conclusion, April isn't really the annoying character I originally made her out to be. Except for this episode! I'll protect you, April! Protect yourself! It is the human known as April O'Neil. I am not gonna ask for help! Dumb! Help! Help! Great. Saved by wrath. I'm never gonna live this down. Oh my god, do I hate this episode! It's not as bad as a foot too big, but my god, is it bad! This really is April's dumbass in distress episode because the entire runtime she is whining, bitching when the guys try to rescue her, refuse to listen when the guys tell her she's not ready, charges in thinking she's ready just to ultimately get kidnapped again. And to put the cherry on top, the bitch has the absolute nerve to be ungrateful when the guys do have to save her from the mess she started in the first place. Actually, scratch that. The real cherry on top is when she gets away with it at the end. Yeah, the episode's lesson of the day wasn't April learning a lesson of not running in and getting the team in danger. It was about the turtles learning not to underestimate April and realize there's more to her. I'm sorry, what? Oh, how I hate this episode. I hate, hate, hate it. Every time I watch this episode, it's like my inner April hater soul reemerges and takes over as I'm reminded as to why I hated her so much in the first place. Why does April get away with everything? She's so annoying. All she does is get everyone in danger and never receives any punishment. God, why can't she just be dissected and get it over with? <sighs> That's not who I am anymore. I redeemed myself. But yeah, she is the worst in this episode. So, like in my foot too big review, I'm not going to review the whole episode. Just the important parts that explains why this episode is not just an annoying April episode, but to explore of why I hate the dumbass in distress trope. To which, if you're a newcomer to my channel, here are some of my other videos if you need to know what it is. But without further ado, let's get into a crane conspiracy. The episode begins with the turtles and April parkouring over New York. April is shown to be frustrated as she wants to be a part of the team, where Raph rightfully points out. It took 15 years of training before Master Splinter let us go on a real mission. You got a long way to go, sister. Which, and this is my third time of me saying this, is a good point. Like, I remember saying in my April video, how I like April having a realistic progression of becoming a Kuno Weech, which some commenters pointed out that's not really the case. April only had about two to three years of training to suddenly be on par with not only the Turtles, but to Karai and Shinigami, who had about 15 years of experience. <laughs> okay, maybe the word realistic was the wrong word to use. It's more like a slow, natural-like progression into a kunoichi. But yeah, that wouldn't really happen in real life. The reason I point this out is because this is exactly what Raph and Leo are talking about. April at this point is still new to be going on real missions. Yeah, she had some moments before this episode where she could defend herself, but she still needed help. 
she still couldn't take on Karai or Mutagen Man on her own without help. So as a viewer, I'm totally on the turtle side. They themselves were struggling against Krang minions in the first episode after 15 years of training. So who does April think she is thinking she's ready for a real mission? Okay, let's fast forward a bit. After sensing someone is watching them, the gang is introduced to Jack Kurtzman. A journalist who has been studying the Krang for a while reveals to the gang that TCRI is still around. The group is suddenly ambushed as April bravely proves to everyone she does deserve to be taken seriously by taking on the Krang droids or she just hides behind a couch like a coward just for Donna to save her. I'll protect you, April. Protect yourself. <laughs> no! Must remain fair. Okay, there's actually two reasons as to why this moment of April being incompetent is annoying and bad. The obvious first reason, she appears like such an ungrateful bitch when the guys are trying to protect her, especially to Donnie. Look, I know I was harsh on him in A Foot Too Big, and I do plan on making a Donnie video soon, geek or creep. But in this episode, he's not a creep. He's trying to help her. He and Mikey are the ones who actually do want her to come on more adventures with them. And he protects her. Look, I would excuse April's behavior if maybe Donnie was babying her like she was his damsel in distress for him, the main character, to save. But no, Donnie is actually really tamed in this episode. I guess you can be weirded out when he tries to hug her in this moment. Yeah, Donnie has a habit of being huggy with April, but I'll go into more detail in my Donnie video. But going back to focus, it makes my blood boil when April barks at him when he does try to help her. She's being a literal dumbass in distress. Someone who whines all the time about not being taken seriously, but when they do try to rush in, they either get one-shotted, kidnapped, or even worse, they put others in danger and for some unknown goddamn reason nobody calls them out on this yeah if anything if the heroes do get mad and yell at these damsels it's portrayed as a jerk moment like they were the ones who were in the wrong for losing their tempers when the dumbass throws themselves in danger when it could have easily been prevented if they had listened in the first place um hey writers you got it backwards. You are supposed to punish someone when they do something reckless like this. They could actually die and bring others with them. Stop trying to make the heroes feel bad for calling others out on their BS. Second reason, April has shown before this episode that she can defend herself. Like I said before, April may not be a badass yet or needs help taking on bigger enemies, but she can still outsmart the enemy. Take, for instance, her first fight with Karai. There was no way in hell April could beat Karai in a physical fight one-on-one -on -one without the internet screaming, Mary Sue! But she does win when she remembers Splinter's advice and catches Karai off guard. That's great! In her fight with Mutagen Man, although she was getting her ass clapped, she and Casey proved to be a good tag team together as they both managed to hold him off just long enough for them to escape. And finally, when Karai sends bots after her, April actually tries to lead the bots away from Casey and then actually uses a pretty cool escape route. Oh, come on, April haters. You gotta admit, that was badass. So, what happened to her? Why is she suddenly so useless to the point where the whole running gag of the episode is how incompetent or weak April is? Like, did someone not watch the previous seasons? April still has a long way to go, yes, but she's not this weak or this incompetent or this stupid. Like, girl, get away from the lasers. What are you, five? I think another way for April to sort of get away with her attitude is if she was being a competent fighter, but the guys were constantly getting in her way because they don't believe she's capable of defending herself. Which would make sense. Remember, the Turtles just reconciled with April, so they weren't aware of her fighting moments. 
it would make sense for them to be more protective of her. They want to make sure they don't lose her again. Now, April would still look a bit bad in this version, but at least we can understand her frustration. Speaking of April being bad, when the turtles go to check on TCRI, they tell April to stay back just for her to run in and saying, She's not some sidekick. She just wanted to be a part of the team. She's not some baby. I would like to remind the not sidekick of how she was hiding behind a couch in the previous scene with only a handful of Krang being present. And now she's running into a building full of them. April, there may not be a couch big enough for you to hide in this time. Why are you coming in when you could barely survive the last attack? It's the dumbass and dumbass in distress showing. Ugh, how it plagues the mind. So one thing I think the writers were trying to do in April's favor is having her show that she is essential to the team with her powers. To her credit, so little in this episode, she does find out that Krang Prime is planning an invasion soon with her powers. But April's powers are so inconsistent. Sometimes she has control over them. Sometimes it appears when the plot demands it, especially in this episode. Or sometimes they make shit up because the plot needs it, like when she could revive Donnie. Now, in this episode, her powers just show up. Again, in the beginning, she just gets a headache and she figures out that someone is following her. Now, this isn't like Dragon Ball Z, where characters have to train themselves to sense energy, like how Vegeta did on Namek. April's headaches just come to her. It's never explained how they come to her. It just comes when it's necessary to the plot, as proof as enemies can still sneak up on her. I would say another way April's cockiness could work if she did have more control of her powers. Like she was super overly confident in her powers, but then realizes she still has a long way to go as they're still not consistent. Again, this could be a learning moment for her, that just because you have this incredible power, that doesn't mean you're invincible, and you still need to be patient and work hard for your skills. But no, that's not what happens. April instead gets in Krang Prime's face when he's doing his villain monologue, and then blows everyone's cover by gasping at the fact that the big scary monster who tried to take over the planet last season is still trying to take over the planet which who would have guessed blows the group's cover and gets everyone in danger the group tries to fight back which who would have guessed april gets kidnapped it is the human known as april O'Neil. i am not gonna ask for help I'm sorry, April, but what happened to Donnie only protecting himself? What happened to, I'm not going to ask for help? What happened to, I'm not some sidekick? If you're going to talk a big game, then you better have the muscle to back it up. The turtles run after her, or what they think is her, into a cage where it's revealed that the Krang are actually trying to make clones of April. But the Krang still needs her DNA to perfect the clones, as some came out wrong. Oh, how I love it when cartoons are not afraid to traumatize kids. Raph goes after her when April has the absolute balls to say. Oh, great. Saved by Raph. I'm never gonna live this down. You have some goddamn nerve, young lady. Did it ever occur to you that maybe you wouldn't need Raph to save you if you had just stayed with Kurtzman in the first place? Or, or how about if you didn't get all up in Krang Prime's face? Then you wouldn't have blown their cover? Or, or did it ever occur to you that if you, you, the 16-year-old girl who had about a few months of ninja training, shouldn't have run into a building full of Krang who you know are after you when earlier you couldn't even handle a small handful of them? In other words, Did it ever occur to you that this was your fault? <sighs> need some water? I just need a moment. <sighs>
So you may be wondering, after an entire episode of April whining, being incompetent, being bratty, rushing in when she's told to stay back for her protection, blowing their cover, jeopardizing the mission, getting herself and the team in danger, does she at least redeem herself? Nope! What happens is that the plot pulls out a pure MacGuffin with April's powers. What's a MacGuffin, you may ask? It's an object or a device in a movie or a book that serves merely as a trigger for the plot, which sums up April's powers in a nutshell. But somehow, that justifies today's lesson of the day that the Turtles couldn't have saved the day without April's help. No! Today's lesson of the day should be April learning a lesson of not running in and getting herself and the team in danger because they wouldn't be in any danger if she did what she was told. Like, oh my God. How hard is that? How hard is it for April to just say, I guess I'm not as ready as I thought I was. Or, I didn't mean to get you guys in trouble. Next time, I'll be more careful. Or, how hard is it for April to just say, I'm sorry? It's not that hard, writers. See, I'll say it again. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for being bratty. I'm sorry for whining. I'm sorry for getting you guys in trouble. And I'm so sorry for being a jerk to you all. I was wrong. You see, it's really not that hard to say, writers. But for some reason that I don't know why this happens to dumbasses in distress, April basically gets away with everything. This episode actually ends with the gang finding out that April is a mutant human Krang hybrid, which explains why she's so important to the Krang. Which also means this episode is an important episode. Hooray! Do I really need to explain why this episode is so bad? Look, I have admitted that April is not as bad as I remember her, but she's not a saint either. There is a reason why she has her haters. There is a reason why people think she's annoying. And this episode highlights her worst tendencies by 11. All April does is whine, be bratty towards the guys, throws a tantrum when she doesn't get what she wants, rushes in when thinking she can handle it, but to the surprise of no one, she can't handle it. And there's absolutely no consequences to her. Look, I would have given this episode a pass if in this scene where the turtles realize they couldn't have saved the day without April, April would have just apologized for her behavior. I still wouldn't like this episode, but at least it would hold April accountable because it really is annoying how she got away with everything. Jesus Christ, she just made a mistake. At least she's not some Mary Sue. It's like you guys can't handle realistic written women. Oh, you want to pull out the gender card, huh? Well, two can play at that game. Let me explain why that right there is bullshit. First, what's so realistic about April? The fact she has telekinetic powers? That's not realistic. The fact that she has the most generic, basic, one-note personality? That's not realistic. Real teenage girls have much more to their personality other than caring but arrogant. Is the fact she is so inconsistent in the love triangle where we have no idea what the fuck she's feeling? That's not realistic either. A real girl would get away from any guy that makes her uncomfortable or a real girl would be much more consistent in her crushes. She wouldn't be flip-flopping this much without a reason which the show never gives us by the way. Or is it the fact that she gets away with her behavior? No! Because in real life, you do get punished if you do do something this reckless. So, 
What's the realism to her? Second, why is it only April being written realistically? I've made a note about this in my April Part 2 video that April is really lacking in the personality department. Some commenters have pointed out that she's supposed to be a realistic girl, which is the reason for this long rant, but nobody else is written that way. There is so much more depth to the other characters, especially the turtles, and even some minor characters get to have more interesting personalities to them. So why doesn't April get more depth? Why is she the only one tethered to realistic girl character? What's the purpose of that? If everyone in this cast can be written with more to them, then so can April. Third, and this is the real reason why people don't like your realistic girl characters, it's because they don't get any consequences. A lot of these girls are annoying or bratty, but they barely face any consequences. If anything, the show will bend over backwards to somehow justify to whatever BS the girl is doing and somehow make the boys apologize to them, which is bullshit. I ranted about this in my April video too, which I'll put a link to the rant in my card up here. But I'd like to add some new things to that. This whole episode is about April trying to be a real member of the team. Okay, that's fine. But if she's going to be a member of the team, then she should take on the responsibility that comes with that. When the brothers do something stupid, or they're acting out, or they themselves get the team in danger, they're called out on that. They get yelled at by the other brothers. They're told not to do that again. Or they even get hit when they're being annoying. And then by the end of the episode, they apologize. And that's what April is lacking. Look, if she does want to prove she's not a baby or she's as tough as the guys, then she also has to take on the responsibility of admitting when she's wrong and face the consequences. I don't know why writers do this. My best guess is that although they want to write a strong woman, they still think that girls are these sensitive creatures that cry so easily when they face any form of critiques and they must protect their fragile little feelings. Hey, any future writers or current writers, do not baby us. April is a teenager, yes? But she's not a baby as she tries and fails to prove to us. If the turtles can handle learning a lesson and take accountability when they fuck up, so can April. Don't be afraid of having your girl characters admit when they fuck up. Don't be afraid to have them admit they were wrong or even apologize. We can handle it. You just hate damsels in distress! I actually made two discussion videos about damsels in distress. One good and one bad. Do you want to know what makes a good damsels in distress over a dumbass in distress? It's having the damsel admit she was wrong, learn from her mistakes, and improve into a better character. They may not be as strong as the main heroes, but they are still improving and don't have to whine about not being a part of the team because they already proved that they are essential to the group with their actions instead of their complaints. That's what you should do. And enough of this BS of we don't like realistic women. We don't like badly written women. Don't settle for mediocrity. Okay, now that I've covered the worst April episode ever, I think I want to talk about someone else in the main cast. Someone who I think I also need to be hard on. Someone who, in my opinion, their actions have been downplayed too much and needs a scolding. I'm coming for you, Donnie. Kitty! Why is the next chapter?
Come in the comments and tell it comes out. Don't do this. Don't be like this guy. No one likes this guy. Yes, Chapter 7 will take time to make, but the good news is that now you can read it on my Patreon. New pages come out every Thursday at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Times. It's only $3 a month, or you can sign up for my new $5 a month tier, where you can receive two free prints from me every month and get access to deleted scenes from Goat in Black. The more you guys sign up, the less hours I have to work and I can focus on getting Goat in Black out quicker. We also have channel memberships on YouTube for $1.99 a month where you can have access to behind the scenes commentary and we have super things if you want to make a one time donation which will also be shout out in our next video. Can't afford that? That's okay because you can also help by liking and sharing this to everyone you know to help this channel grow. Also, hit that subscribe button to help support the channel. Just 2k more subscribers to our goal of 5k. Thanks guys and stay unhinged. Can you have that to black me to Zilla and Bill Cypher? What?